Mwiki Baki was the third president of Kenya who sought to bring progressive changes and stability to his nation. He was active on the political scene from the early days of Kenya's independence and worked in various government positions. Having served as vice president in prior years, he had the experience and knowledge of politics and government, giving him the advantage to lead Kenya in the right democratic direction. Kenya had been dominated by the KANU, Kenyan African National Union, since it acquired independence from Britain in 1963. Mwaiki Baki formed his own party, namely, Democratic Party after fallout with the then autocratic president, Daniel Arap Moy, and began his own journey towards presidency. Coming into power at a critical time for the country, he came as a fresh change for Kenya, he was a democratically elected leader who was welcomed nationally and internationally. While the euphoria did not last, as the decay of inherent political corruption continued to inhibit and obstruct progress in this sub-Saharan country, Kibaki introduced constitutional reform, free primary education, and made efforts to revive a damaged health care system. He also established a multi-party system to break away from the authoritarian rule. Born on November 15, 1931, Mwai Kibaki was the youngest of eight children of peasant farmers, Kibaki Githinji and Terasia Wanjiku. Belonging to the Kikuyu tribe, which is the largest tribal group in Kenya, they lived in a village called Gachuyaini in Nyeri County. He showed remarkable intelligence and aptitude for learning during his primary school years and was sent to attend Mangu High School, one of Kenya's best high schools. Kibaki studied there between 1947 and 1950. Outstanding academic achievement earned him a scholarship to Kenya's renowned Make Rare University, where he studied economics, political science, and history. His leadership skills came to the fore as chairman of the Kenya Students Association, a leading position in the Make Rare Students Guild, and he graduated with distinction in 1955. After a brief stint as Uganda Shell Company's assistant general manager, Mwaiki Baki received a scholarship to study at the London School of Economics. Excelling in economics and public finance, he was poised to apply his efforts and knowledge to his home country upon his return in 1958. Mwaiki Baki accepted a position as assistant lecturer in economics at Make Rare University. In 1960, he resigned from this position to join the KANU, Kenyan African National Union, the dominant political party in Kenya at that time. Sweeping changes in the next few years, leading to Kenya's independence from Britain three years later, took him firmly into the world of politics. In 1963, he was elected to the Kenyan parliament and continued to serve in various roles until he was appointed Minister of Finance and Economic Planning by President Yomo Kenyatta, in 1969. Gaining valuable experience and establishing a good reputation and record for himself during these early years in politics and government, Mwaiki Baki was appointed vice president under Daniel Arap Moy in 1978, when he rose to the presidency upon the death of Kenyatta. In Mwa's cabinet, Kibaki was initially entrusted with the finance portfolio. As Minister of Finance, he introduced measures and changes that brought a degree of prosperity to Kenya. In 1982, he was given the portfolio of home affairs. Mwa's style of government became increasingly autocratic and he amended the constitution to make Kanu the only legitimate political party. Assuming all the power, Moy removed Kibaki from vice presidency and demoted him to the Ministry of Health in 1988. Disputes and disagreements with the president eventually led to Kibaki's resignation from Kanu in 1991. During this time, civil unrest was increasing among people, and fierce opposition to Moi's oppressive policies forced a repeal of the constitutional act that had installed a one-party rule for Kanu. Kibaki immediately resigned to form the Democratic Party. Moi's grip on power, however, remained strong, even as the country was rising against his despotic and repressive regime. He used ethnically divisive and violent tactics to remain in power through the next two elections. With this upheaval in the background and several different ethnic groups seeking representation, Kibaki formed the National Rainbow Coalition, NARC. In 2002, 
Kibaki became president, after NARC gained momentum and several politicians defected from Kanu, and Kenya was restless for change and freedom from Moy. His victory was accompanied by jubilation and high hopes for a better future for Kenya. Significant economic changes were implemented by him during his first term as president, however, the endemic corruption that Kibaki had promised to fight during his election campaign remained rampant. By the second term, which he won in the elections of 2007, charges of rigging and widespread fraud at the ballot box and other scandals involving his coalition had tarnished his image. After the 2013 presidential elections, he handed over the presidency to Uhuru Kenyatta. Constitutional reform of 2010 is one of Kibaki's most significant contributions to Kenyan democracy. The new constitution allows for substantial institutional checks and ensures basic rights. He introduced free primary education for all children in Kenya in 2003 and revitalized the health care system that had previously fallen into disarray. He strove for economic changes with the intention of reviving and strengthening Kenya's derailed economy. His policy changes encouraged multinational companies to invest in Kenya, fostering growth and development for Kenyans. Life expectancy and infant mortality figures improved considerably during the years from 2002, 2012 owing to his efforts in delivering better health care to the citizens of Kenya. Mwaikibaki married Lucy Mothanai in 1962 and has four children, one daughter, Judy, and three sons, Jimmy, Tony and David. During his presidential election campaign in 2002, Kibaki was injured in a car crash, causing him to appear in a wheelchair during the inauguration as president. While he has denied allegations of a second marriage there have been questions raised about his relations with Mary Wambui a Kenyan businesswoman with political leanings, with whom he is alleged to have a daughter, Wangui Mwai. Emilio Mwai Kibaki CGH, November 15, 1931 to April 21, 2022, was a Kenyan politician who served as the third president of Kenya from December 2002 until April 2013. He had previously served as the fourth vice president of Kenya for 10 years from 1978 to 1988 under President Daniel Arap Moy. He also held cabinet ministerial positions in the Yomo Kenyatta and Daniel Arap Moy governments, including as Minister for Finance, 1969 to 1981, under Kenyatta, and Minister for Home Affairs, 1982 to 1988, and Minister for Health, 1988 to 1991, under Moy. Kibaki served as an opposition member of parliament from 1992 to 2002. He unsuccessfully vied for the presidency in 1992 and 1997. He served as the leader of the official opposition in parliament from 1998 to 2002. Following the 2002 presidential election, he was elected as president of Kenya. Kibaki was born on November 15, 1931 in Gachuyaini village, Uthaya division of Kenya's then Nyeri district, now Nyeri county. He was the youngest son of Kikuyu peasants Kibaki Githinji and Teresia Wanjiku. Though baptized as Emilio Stanley by Italian missionaries in his youth, he has been known as Mwai Kibaki throughout his public life. Kibaki started his schooling at the village school in Gachuyaini, where he completed two years. He then continued his education at the Karima Mission School, close to Uthaya town, before moving to Mathari School, now Nyeri High School, between 1944 and 1946. In addition to his academic studies, he learned carpentry and masonry at the school. After Karima Primary and Nyeri Boarding Primary Schools, he proceeded to Mangyu High School, where he studied between 1947 and 1950, gaining the highest grade in his O-level examinations. In his last year at Mangyu, Kibaki briefly considered enlisting in the army, but this ambition was thwarted when Kenya's chief colonial secretary, Walter Kautz, prohibited members of Kikuyu, Mbu, and Meru communities from joining the military. Kibaki instead attended Make Rare University in Kampala, Uganda, where he studied economics, history, and political science. He graduated with a first-class honors degree in economics. After graduation, 
Kibaki remained in Uganda, working for the Shell Company of East Africa. He then earned a scholarship entitling him to undertake postgraduate studies at any British university. He chose the London School of Economics, from which he obtained a BSc in Public Finance, with distinction. In 1958, he went back to Makerere, where he taught as an assistant lecturer in the Economics Department until 1961. In 1961, Kibaki married Lucy Muthany, the daughter of a church minister, who was then a secondary school head teacher. In early 1960, Mwai Kibaki left academia for active politics by giving up his job at Make Rear and returning to Kenya to become an executive officer of Kenya African National Union, KANU, at the request of Thomas Joseph Mboya, who was the Secretary General of KANU. Kibaki then helped to draft Kenya's independence constitution. In 1963, Kibaki was elected as Member of Parliament for the Dunholm constituency, subsequently called Bahati and now known as Makadara, in Nairobi. His election was the start of a long political career. In 1963 Kibaki was appointed the Permanent Secretary for the Treasury. Appointed Assistant Minister of Finance and Chairman of the Economic Planning Commission in 1963, he was promoted to Minister of Commerce and Industry in 1966. In 1969, he became Minister of Finance and Economic Planning where he served until 1982. In 1974, Kibaki, facing serious competition for his Dunholm constituency seat from an opponent Mrs. Jail Mbago, whom he had only narrowly and controversially beaten for the seat in the 1969 elections, moved his political base from Nairobi to his rural home, Uthaya, where he was subsequently elected as Member of Parliament. The same year Time magazine rated him among the top 100 people in the world who had the potential to lead. He was re-elected Member of Parliament for Uthaya in the subsequent elections of 1979, 1983, 1988, 1992, 1997, 2002, and 2007. When Daniel Arap Moy succeeded Yomo Kenyatta as President of Kenya in 1978, Kibaki was elevated to the vice presidency, and kept the finance portfolio until Moy changed his ministerial portfolio from finance to home affairs in 1982. He had in 1978 rejected an offer to become World Bank vice president for Africa instead choosing to further his political career. As of 2023, he is still regarded as one of the most effective and consequential finance ministers of the Republic of Kenya. Later as president, he kept close tabs with the Treasury and directly influenced key economic policies resulting in steady economic growth. Kibaki fell out of favor with President Moy in March 1988, and was dropped as Vice President and moved to the Ministry of Health. Kibaki's political style during these years was described as gentlemanly and non-confrontational. This style exposed him to criticism that he was a spineless, or even cowardly, politician who never took a stand. According to one joke, he never saw a fence he didn't sit on. Similarly, Kenneth Mataiba also referred to him as General Kiguya for refusing to resign the Kanu government and join the opposition after he was dropped as vice president in 1988. Kiguya translates to the fearful one in the Kikuyu language. He also, as the political circumstances of the time dictated, projected himself as a loyal stalwart of the ruling single party, Kanu. In the months before multi-party politics were introduced in 1992, he infamously declared that agitating for multi-party democracy and trying to dislodge Kanu from power was like trying to cut down a fig tree with a razor blade. It was therefore with great surprise that the country received the news of Kibaki's resignation from government and leaving Kanu on Christmas Day in December 1991, only days after the repeal of Section 2A of the then Constitution of Kenya, which restored the multi-party system of government. Soon after his resignation, Kibaki founded the Democratic Party, DP, and entered the presidential race in the upcoming multi-party elections of 1992. Kibaki was regarded as one of the favorites among WAS challengers, although his support came mainly from the Kikuyu voters as the election was fought along ethnic lines, confirming a prediction made by both Moy and political analysts at the beginning of multi-partyism. 
Kibaki came third in the subsequent presidential elections of 1992, when the divided opposition lost to President Moy and Kanu despite having received more than two-thirds of the vote. He then came second to Moy in the 1997 elections, when again, Moy beat a divided opposition to retain the presidency. Kibaki joined third-placed Rayla Odinga in accusing the president of rigging the poll, and both opposition leaders boycotted Moi's swearing in for his fifth term in office. In preparation for the 2002 elections, Kibaki's Democratic Party affiliated with several other opposition parties to form the National Alliance of Rainbow Coalition, NARC. A group of disappointed Kanu presidential aspirants then quit Kanu in protest after being overlooked by outgoing President Moi when Moi had Uhuru Kenyatta, founding father Yomo Kenyatta's son and Kibaki's successor as Kenya's fourth president after the 2013 general election, nominated to be the Kanu presidential candidate, and hurriedly formed the Liberal Democratic Party, LDP. NAK later combined with the LDP to form the National Rainbow Coalition, NARC. On October 14, 2002, at a large opposition rally in Uhuru Park, Nairobi, Kibaki was nominated the NARC Opposition Alliance presidential candidate after Rayla Odinga made the famous declaration, Kibaki Tosha. Swahili for Kibaki is enough. On December 3, 2002, Kibaki was injured in a road accident while on his way back to Nairobi from a campaign meeting at Makako's junction 40 kilometers, 25 miles, from Nairobi. He was subsequently hospitalized in Nairobi, then London, after sustaining fracture injuries in the accident. After the accident, he had to move using a wheelchair up to months later after his presidency. For the remainder of his life, he walked rather awkwardly as a result of those injuries. The rest of his presidential campaign was thus conducted by his NARC colleagues in his absence, led by Rayla Odinga and Kijana Wamalwe, who went on to become the vice president, who campaigned tirelessly for Kibaki after stating, the captain has been injured in the field, but the rest of the team shall continue. On December 27, 2002, Kibaki and NARC won a landslide victory over Kanu, with Kibaki getting 62% of the votes in the presidential elections, against only 31% for the Kanu candidate Uhuru Kenyatta. On December 30, 2002, still nursing injuries from the motor vehicle accident and in a wheelchair, Kibaki was sworn in as the third president and commander-in-chief of the Armed Forces of the Republic of Kenya, in front of thousands of cheering supporters at the historic Uhuru Park within Nairobi City. At his inauguration, he stressed his opposition to government corruption, saying, Government will no longer be run on the whims of individuals. Kibaki's swearing in marked the end of four decades of Kanu rule, the party having ruled Kenya since independence. Moy, who had been in power for 24 years, began his retirement. President Kibaki's style was that of a low-key publicity-averse but highly intelligent and competent technocrat. He, unlike his predecessors, never tried to establish a personality cult, never had his portrait on every unit of Kenya's currency, never had all manner of streets, places and institutions named after him, never had state-sanctioned praise songs composed in his honor, never dominated news bulletins with reports of his presidential activities, however routine or mundane, and never engaged in the populist sloganeering of his predecessors. His style of leadership gave him the image of a seemingly aloof, withdrawn technocrat or intellectual and made him seem out of touch with the street, and his seemingly hands-off leadership by delegation style made his governments, especially at the cabinet level, appear dysfunctional. It is widely acknowledged that age and the 2002 accident denied the country the witty, sporty, eloquent Kibaki of the previous years. A man who could make lengthy and flowery contributions on the floor of parliament without notes was confined to reading speeches at every forum. In late January 2003, it was announced that the president had been admitted to Nairobi Hospital to have a blood clot the after effect of his car accident removed from his leg. He came out of hospital and addressed the public outside the hospital on TV in a visibly incoherent manner, and speculation after that was that he had suffered a stroke, his second, the first being said to have occurred sometimes in the 1970s. 
his subsequent ill health greatly diminished his performance during his first term and the affairs of government during that time are said to have been largely run by a group of loyal aides, both in and out of government. Kibaki did not seem well, for instance, when he appeared live on TV on September 25, 2003 to appoint Moody Awari vice president after the death in office of vice president, Michael Wamalwekijana. In January 2003, Kibaki introduced a free primary education initiative, which brought over one million children who would not have been able to afford school the chance to attend. The initiative received positive attention, including praise from Bill Clinton, who met Kibaki in Kenya in July 2005. In his tenure he was involved in numerous academic events including the famous Equity Group Foundation, Wings to Fly 2013 Scholars Commissioning. On January 26, 2007, President Kibaki declared his intention of running for re-election in the 2007 presidential election. On September 16, 2007, Kibaki announced that he would stand as the candidate of a new alliance incorporating all the parties who supported his re-election, called the Party of National Unity. The parties in his alliance included the much-diminished former ruling Kanu, DP, Nark Kenya, Ford Kenya, Ford People, and Jiraika Show. Kibaki's main opponent, Rayla Odinga, had used the referendum victory to launch the ODM, which nominated him as its presidential candidate for the 2007 elections. On September 30, 2007, President Kibaki launched his presidential campaign at Nio Stadium, Nairobi. Kalonzo Mujica then broke away from Rayla's ODM to mount his own fringe bid for the presidency, thus narrowing down the contest between the main candidates, Kibaki, the incumbent, and Odinga. Opinion polls up to election day showed Kibaki behind Rayla Odinga nationally, but closing. On regional analysis, the polls showed him behind Rayla in all regions of the country except Central Province, Mbu, and Meru where he was projected to take most of the votes, and behind Kalonzo Mujica in Kalonzo's native Yukambani. President Kibaki was accused of ruling with a small group of his elderly peers, mainly from the educated side of the Kikuyu elite that emerged in the Yomo Kenyatta era, usually referred to as the Kitchen Cabinet or the Mount Kenya Mafia. 103 There was therefore the perception that his was a Kikuyu presidency. This perception was reinforced when the president was seen to have trashed the pre-2002 election memorandum of understanding with the Rayla Odinga led Liberal Democratic Party, and was further reinforced by his disputed 2007 election victory over the Rayla Odinga led ODM party being achieved nearly exclusively with the votes of the populous MT Kenya Kikuyu, Meru, and Embu communities. The passage of Kenya's transformative 2010 constitution, championed by President Kibaki in the Kenyan constitutional referendum in 2010 was a major triumph and achievement, which went a long way into addressing Kenya's governance and institutional challenges. With the new constitution started wide-ranging institutional and legislative reforms, which President Kibaki skillfully and successfully steered in the final years of this presidency. His greatest moment was the promulgation of the new constitution. It was a very deep and emotional moment for him, Kibaki's son Jimmy was quoted as saying. Kibaki handed over the Kenyan presidency to his successor, Uhuru Kenyatta, on April 9, 2013 at a public inauguration ceremony held at Kenya's largest stadium. I am happy to pass the torch of leadership to the new generation of leaders, said Kibaki. He also thanked his family and all Kenyans for the support they had given him throughout his tenure in office, and cited the various achievements his government made. The handover marked the end of his presidency and of his 50 years of public service. Kibaki was married to Lucy Muthani from 1961 until her death in 2016. They had four children, Judy Wanjiku, Jimmy Kibaki, David Kagai, and Tony Githinji. They also had several grandchildren, Joy Jamie Marie, Rachel Muthany, Mwai Jr., and Kristen A. Muthany. Jimmy Kibaki has declared and aspired to be his father's political heir, though he has been unsuccessful in that endeavor so far. In 2004, the media reported that Kibaki had a second spouse, 
whom he allegedly married under customary law, Mary Wambui, and a daughter, Wang Limwai. State House in response released an unsigned statement that Kibaki's only immediate family at the time was his then wife, Lucy, and their four children. In 2009, Kibaki, with Lucy in close attendance, held an odd press conference to restate publicly that he only had one wife. The matter of Kibaki's alleged mistress, and his wife's unusually dramatic public reactions therein, provided an embarrassing sideshow during his presidency, with the Washington Post terming the entire scandal as a new Kenyan soap opera. Ms. Wambui, the rather popular other woman, who enjoyed the state trappings of a presidential spouse and became a powerful and wealthy businesswoman during the Kibaki presidency, frequently drove Lucy into episodes of highly embarrassing very publicly displayed rage. Ms. Wambui, despite opposition from Kibaki's family, led publicly by Kibaki's son, Jimmy, and despite Kibaki's public endorsement and campaign for her opponent, succeeded Kibaki as member of parliament for Uthaya in the 2013 general election. In December 2014, Senator Bonnie Calwell stated on KTN's Jeff Coyne Ange Live that President Kibaki had introduced Wambui as his wife. Kibaki enjoyed playing golf and was a member of the Muthaiga Golf Club. He was a practicing and a very committed member of the Roman Catholic Church and attended Consolata Shrines Catholic Church in Nairobi every Sunday at noon. On August 21, 2016, Kibaki was taken to Karen Hospital 130 and later flew to South Africa for specialized treatment. Unlike the Kenyatta and Moy families, Kibaki's family has shown little interest in politics save for his nephew Enderatumiriathai, governor of Lakeipia County, from 2017 to 2022. Mr. Kibaki died on April 21, 2022, at the age of 90. His death was announced by President Uhuru Kenyatta, who issued a proclamation that he, Kibaki, would be granted a state funeral with full civilian and military honors and declared a period of national mourning with flags flying at half-mast until President Mwai Kibaki is buried. On April 25, 2022, his body was taken to Parliament buildings on a military gun carriage to offset the lying-in state component of his state funeral. President Uhuru Kenyatta and First Lady wife Margaret Kenyatta led Kenyans in viewing the body. His body was laid on a catafalque at the Speaker's Way bearing the color of his presidential standard and dressed in his trademark pinstripe suits. His body was also guarded by four Kenya Defense Forces colonels changing ships after two hours. The lying-in state continued until April 27, 2022 ahead of funeral service held at Nio National Stadium on April 29, 2022 which was attended by key dignitaries including some sitting presidents. He was finally interred at his Uthaya home in Nyeri County on April 30, 2022 with full military honors after a church service held by the Catholic Church 132 at Uthaya approved school. The honors included the last post and the long reveille bugle cry, a 19-gun salute and the missing man formation fly past. South Sudan declared three days of mourning, Tanzania declared two days of mourning. Thank you for watching this video.